Okay, it's super early days, but I just gotta talk about this card, man. Eustace Captain Kid. Hey, man, I think that this could be a potential boogeyman. How's it going, everybody? My name is Ryan, aka Say It With Me, Blackbeard TCG. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day, and if not, hopefully I can make it a little bit better. Now, look. In today's video, I want to talk about Eustace Captain Kid. Um, I also want to go over Birdcage. Um, this is a card that has been revealed and why I think that these cards are really cool. I'm actually really happy that they're coming to the game. But then I also want to know your guys' thoughts down below on these two cards and how this will affect Red going forward. I'm super, super curious about your guys' thoughts. So make sure that you guys leave your thoughts down below in the comment. I will make sure to like your comment so you know I read it and I try to respond back to all of my comments. So, before we get into the boogeyman that is Yusuf's Captain Kid, um, I just want to talk real quick about OP05. Obviously, the red leaders that we are getting, Bello Betty, Sabo, right? Dual color leaders. A lot of these character cards are going to be locked behind the Revolutionary Army type, which is something that I've discussed in one of my previous videos about that's basically what Bandai is going to have to do with red to try to mitigate Zoro and Law from continuing to pop off and have tools to continue to pop off because as we can see very recently Zoro and Law are still absolutely crushing the metagame even in OPO4 right like and, and look at the cards they're not using this list has zero OPO4 cards this list has zero OPO4 cards this list has zero OPO3 cards okay and it's okay i lied there's two copies of sugar so there's there's opio4 i i lied okay this is like two copies of an opio4 card okay so i say all that to say this they're trying their best not to add those tools but and we already know you know there's restricted list ban list but we see green as well as purple getting some pretty hefty buffs birdcage is interesting because i think it's a really good stage but it's it's super cool because it's um, effect at the end of your turn. If you have 10 Dawn uh, cards on your field, you can KO all rested characters with a cost of five or less and then trash this stage. I feel like this is going to be interesting if you try to manipulate it to try the, to time when you want your birdcage to proc and kind of like nuke your opponent's board. Again, when you look at these lists um, of Zoro as well as Law, they're not playing anything over a cost of five. So literally everything, absolutely everything can get popped by birdcage also i apologize for the ad here i don't i don't know why that ad's coming out you feel me so birdcage I, I think it's really really interesting in that aspect of course it's limited to just do flamingo leader as well so green purple do flamingo gets another tool for it to be a formidable deck which it already is quite frankly do flamingo is a very strong deck this makes it better but i do really hope that this kind of opens up more ideas for people to play the pure Don Quixote Pirates build as that is also getting some more support. So super curious to see how this ends up going. But we got to talk about Usus Captain Kid, the, what, what I call the, the boogeyman. So for those of you that are unaware of what he does, he's seven cost 8,000 power on play as well as when he's attacking, you could send back one Dawn and you give your leader plus 1,000 power. Now, the reason why this is spoopy, all right? The reason why this is scary hours is because if you have multiple of these bad boys on board, you can use the ability. So say if you're at Tendon, you can swing with one kid, use the ability, swing with another kid, use the ability. You're at eight Dawn, right? Well, you're at that point of the game where next turn, you're gonna get two Dawn, you're back to 10 Dawn and you can do it again. Granted, if your uses Captain Kids do not perish. What does that mean? That means that your leader is basically always going to be pumped up by 1,000 or potentially 2,000 as long as they are on the board. And so your goal is to keep these guys on the board as long as possible because it's an 8K body that can swing. We all know like 5 costs, 6,000 power units are, are really, really valuable. Um, having a natural 8K to swing into it is absolutely satisfying right not only that you're pumping up your leader you could do it every turn you just got to keep these guys alive especially if you're playing red purple luffy then your red purple luffy gets super deadly and he goes from a 6k leader to a 7k leader if you have two of them an 8k leader it just becomes extremely oppressive we all know how things are with nine cost edward newgate being able to pump up leaders well 
uses Captain Kidd can kind of do it pseudo-like. It's not the exact same. I'm not here to say, oh, he needs to be restricted out to one. Okay, like, relax, guys. I, I'm not I'm not the fire army here. The I'm not trying to ruin anybody's fun before the fun even happens. I Because I'm having... Hey, just look at my previous video. I don't even need to talk about it anymore. You guys can watch the previous video and you know my feelings on this. So with that being said, this card, though, is very, very scary. But it excites me. I love this. Like, I'm actually so happy because now, hopefully, we see a little bit more diversity. Now, of course, Red Purple Luffy still has red. You know, technically, you could say if that becomes meta, it's it's still a red deck, right? You, you say Law's meta, it's a red deck? Fair. But I feel like it's the purple that really makes this pop off. Uses Captain Kid. I'm still playing around with this leader. I think it has a lot of potential as well. Red Purple, right? But then you also have to look at a leader like Magellan who, again, we still have to see how things turn out. But when it comes to Magellan, Magellan is super interesting because not only do you get the plus 1,000 power when you send a Dawn back off Magellan ability, but you get it automatically with Usus Captain Kid as well. So for just one Usus Captain Kid, your Magellan is 7,000 on your turn, 6,000 on your opponent's turn, which is nice. And now all of a sudden your curve feels so damn good right so if we go ahead and take a look at um purple cards so let's go ahead and filter let's change this to purple um and let's go ahead and start off with your one cost so with one cost you can play hannibal right so that's your one cost turn your three costs you could play your jailer beast so um cost three you could play your rhino jailer beast where is he um you could play this which is very amazing off curve now, if you also have Sadie in your hand, you can play Sadie plus a Jailer Beast, right? But if not, you could play your Rhino. So that's your turn two. Your turn three, you now have five Dawn. What do you want to play on turn three? Well, you have your Maggie, right? You have your five cost Magellan that you could play. That feels really good. Now, of course, obviously things can happen um, depending on if you have the Magellan, if you don't. But obviously if you play Magellan and you're going first, right? You have five Dawn. You send one Dawn back, that means that you would have four Dawn, which means on your next turn, you would not have enough to play the Usus Captain Kid. However, if you're going second, using that same line of, of plays that I just said, so first turn, you play your Hannibal. Second turn, you play your Sadie and a Jailer Beast, or just a Jailer Beast. Third turn, you play Magellan. Fourth turn, you play a Kid. And you guys can see where I'm going with this. It just feels so good like this card just it really enables purple is basically what i'm saying and i'm all for it i'm not against it because we've seen so much red i want to see more cards like kid being printed i want to see more cards like birdcage being printed and i know people are going to say power creep i've been there in the past saying power creep before and i've been 100 percent wrong because the previous decks are still strong, although you could say Power Creep came in different aspects, not just in a raw card itself. But I think that with the state of the game now, it's a great time to start introducing these things, and I think that we should see a lot more. Another card that's very powerful in blue is Borsalino. I don't think it's here, but it is here. This Borsalino here, seven cost Borsalino, um, which is very strong, 8,000 power, but can also uh, be a 3,000 worlds. Um, so yeah, it looks like a lot of cards, uh, a lot of colors are getting very powerful cards. Um, and I love it. I love to see it like red. Obviously you can nerf it on the ban list, but another way is to just buff everything else as well. So my question to you guys in the comments, what do you guys think overall? Do you guys think that this is a good direction? Do you guys think that uses captain kid seven costs is going to be a potential boogeyman? Um, do you guys think it's just whatever? Like I'm all for like, let's just let it rock, man. Let's let it, let's let it rock for a couple sets. We need to, let's just see what it can do. Let purple have some time to shine. All right. It hasn't had any time to shine since Opio one pre-release. Um, and then into Opio one with people playing Kaido and just hunting for that Oni, right? After that purple's fallen off. So that is literally from set one. We're now in set five. Let purple have some fun. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that, fellas. But I'm curious. What are your thoughts? Let me know your thoughts on Yusuf's Captain Kid. Let me know your thoughts on Birdcage. And let me know your thoughts overall on other colors getting very strong cards and trying to limit what red can get. Ugh. What red can get. 
there we go. I don't know why I've stumbled over my words at the very end, but we do it all in one take. I will catch you guys later. Have an amazing weekend. Peace.